Hey everybody, welcome back. All right, this is gonna be video number four. We have done three videos prior to this one, all on the US and its growing debt crisis. We have talked about cryptocurrency, how that works, uh, the infrastructure it's built on, things like blockchain. We've talked about why Bitcoin and how is it different from other cryptocurrencies? Why do we have so many? And so in this video, I want to talk to you about where things are evolving to. So we're kind of all caught up, right? You kind of got all the back information you pretty much need to understand what the problem is and how cryptocurrency is beginning to solve problems within the financial space. And so what we're moving towards is what a lot of people call the fourth industrial revolution and finance is the thing that's going to radically change. And so we've talked a little bit about that, just like how we went from horse and buggies to automobiles or how you can have a cell phone now that has your computer, it has a phone, it has a camera, it has a, you know, a calendar in it. Everything that used to be in like 20 different devices, you now have in one in the palm of your hand. And so that's coming to the financial world. That's coming to how we bank. And that's going to be taking place really over the next probably three to five years. By 2025, I think it's going to look very different how we pay for things. And certainly by 2030, it's going to be really, it's going to be a different world. And so um, in the midst of it all, right, in the midst of a financial crisis that's looming, that looks like that's coming, how can you and I be building a financial arc to take care of ourselves, to take care of our families and other people? Uh, that's the type of stuff we should be thinking about. So the really cool thing is I want to show you in this video, somebody that you may know or you may not know, but his name is Jerome Powell and he is the chair of the Federal Reserve. And so he is actually talking about cryptocurrency quite a bit. And I want you to get it right from the horse's mouth of where the U.S. is going, where different countries are going when it comes to digital currency. So it's not just um, out there on the Internet anymore. It's not just kind of nerds that are talking about it. Uh, actual countries are looking at releasing their own digital currency. And so China is really one of the first players um, to have come out with a digital currency right now. We looked at that in the last video. I'll show you the article again in a couple minutes. But uh, they have their own that they're coming out with in 2022. And right now they're testing it. There's people in different lottery systems that are already using it to pay. And so what, what does that mean? How does that work when we go from a a physical dollar to a digital dollar. Um, and actually the Bahamas was one of the first countries to come out as well uh, with a digital currency and China being uh, one of the leading superpowers that came out with the digital currency. And so we're going to look at that and we're going to hear from Chairman Powell about where are we at right now? Where's the U.S. at right now when it comes to digital currencies? And so believe it or not, 60 Minutes actually interviewed him very recently. And, um, you know, 60 Minutes is stuff that, you know, like my grandparents are probably watching or my parents who maybe never even heard about Bitcoin, never even heard about cryptocurrency. And here's Chairman Powell talking about it. So I want to throw this one on the screen. I hope my computer memory keeps up with me here because I have like four or five videos to show you uh, all of Jerome Powell. And so I, I just I think you're really going to clue in when you hear what he has to say. So let's see if we can get this one going. The Chinese last month unveiled the world's first digital currency from a major power currency that would not be printed, but would exist only in cyberspace on your phone, for example. Is the Fed working on a digital dollar? We are actually evaluating that. Most um, major countries uh, are now looking at, at the possibility of having a digital currency and really asking the question. In our very modern, advanced economy with a, with a, a fast, efficient, full-blown payment system, would adding a, a, a digital currency, a form of digital currency, would it actually benefit the public that we serve? That's the question that we're asking. We're working very hard on that. We're also doing quite a lot of technological experiment. I mean, technology has made this a possible thing. And so we feel it's our obligation to understand it. How would it work? What would the features of it be? There are many subtle and difficult policy choices and design choices that you'd have to make. We're doing all that work. We have not made a decision to do this because, again, the question is, will this benefit the people that we serve? And we need to answer that question well. And we need to involve the public and Congress deeply in that process because it would be an important step if we were to do this. But given the fact that the final decision hasn't been made, you are doing, if I understand you correctly, software development, even graphic design, on what a digital dollar would look like and act like. 
Yes, we're doing lots and lots of work. We're we're doing stuff jointly with foreign uh, with other central banks. We're doing things at the Boston Fed and many of the regional feds have little projects going on here at the board. We have a, a group of people who are doing software development and that kind of thing. You know, this is really just table stakes. This is understanding the technology and the possibilities so that you can really address the policy issues. You think it's likely? I think it's possible. Is all I would say. You've seen many other countries like ours, well-off countries like ours, that are looking at it seriously. In some of those countries, the use of cash has declined precipitously. That is not the case here. Americans still like to use cash. So it's, it's something that will be decided based on the situation here in the United States. Are you considering a digital dollar in order to compete with the cryptocurrencies that are out there already, like Bitcoin? That's not the principal reason, I wouldn't say. Uh, it is a fact that there are, there are private sector uh, currencies, stable coins and, and cryptocurrencies as well. Uh, those are not at a level or a scale that, that um, is concerning at this point. Really, it, it really, the fundamental question for us is, if we add this, will that help the public? Will the pub public be better off? And will there be any negatives, too? There, you know, will, will that have perhaps unexpected effects in other parts of the financial system that we need to consider in weighing the costs and, and benefits of this? We're the, we're the world's reserve currency. The dollar is so important. We need to get this right. We do not need to be the first ones to do this. We, we want to get it right, and that's what we're going to do. Well, you heard him right there talking about what is coming, which is going to be a digital dollar. And as much as he would lead you to believe that, oh, we can't be the first to market, we're, you know, the world's reserve currency, we can't mess this up, we also can't afford to be the last country involved. And so China is already out there with their digital dollar, believe me. Uh, in many ways, in my opinion, this is kind of equivalent to the space race uh, with the Soviet Union. And whoever's going to get to this digital currency first is really going to have uh, an advantage in the new financial market that's emerging. And so the Fed is absolutely working on it um, as much as he's kind of downplaying it. You heard him say there, well, aren't you already doing like graphic design? Aren't you already? And he's like, yeah, we are. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and remove this one from the studio. And then let's look at a couple different things. Let's put this on the screen. So here's the news, the Fed, right? The Fed plans to unveil its digital dollar prototypes in July is what's being reported here. We also have, we looked at this last time. Here's China's China's digital, digital, digital currency will be distributed using a two tiered system to help get in consumers hands. And so down here, we, we talked a little bit about this last time, um, you know, big companies, it's being dispersed by lottery system, big companies like McDonald's and Starbucks um, are already accepting it. And then the big news really is, is also Bahamas is really first to market uh, for a central bank uh, digital currency, and they call it the sand dollar. It's a digital currency, um, and it is available now. The other thing is the UK. Just uh, This was just real recently, April 19th, UK to explore issuing its own digital currency amid Bitcoin boom. Uh, so again, they're really not intrinsically linked. I don't think that cryptocurrency is the reason why these um, central banks are looking at launching digital currencies. It, in a lot of ways, it just makes sense to update. I mean, these days, everybody's tapped to pay. And, and Chairman Powell is correct in that in the States, we still, a lot of people still like to use cash. I can say for myself, I never carry cash. I never carry cash. And I am one of these millennials that taps to pay for everything. If you don't have Apple Pay, I'm really, it's very inconvenient. I'm like, I have to get my card out? What? But I know that that's not necessarily everybody. But I think that that's what we're being phased into. And so I want to show a couple other videos here. Um, I had them all queued up, but then it started just to eat my computer memory. And so I couldn't do it. Um, one that I think is interesting, I, I do want to talk a little bit about the debt and what uh, Chairman Powell says about that. This was very recent. Uh, debt and deficits. Uh, the debt is uh, pretty high, $27 trillion or so. And the annual deficit is now about 2 and a half to $3 trillion or so. Um, is that a concern to the Fed in terms of impacting inflation? So yes, in, in the um, over time and in the longer run, the U.S. federal budget is on an unsustainable path, meaning simply that the debt is growing. So that's really important, right? I mean, he just admitted that 
over the course of time, we're spending more than we're taking in. Now he's going to try to he's going to try to put your mind at ease. But let's finish up what he wants to say here. Meaningfully faster than the economy, and that's by definition unsustainable over time. It's a different thing to say that the current level of the debt is unsustainable. It's not. The current level of the debt is very sustainable, and there's no question of our ability to service and and issue that debt for the foreseeable future. So again, we're talking about the current level of the debt, which we already looked at. We're about 28 trillion right now and climbing. So with Democrat spending uh, and all sorts of bills set before Congress and the Senate to pass, the spending is going to continue to happen, which means the printing of money will continue to happen and the debt will continue to rise. So as much as he's saying the current level is serviceable, it, it's it's not. I mean, once we we're there's a threshold we're getting very close to, and a lot of people are talking about that. In fact, let's look over here. Uh, let me switch my layout back to this. And uh, I saw an article today, Susie Orman. The market reminds me of the 2000s, and you need to be ready for a correction. Here's how you should prepare. So Susie Orman did a whole article about how we should be preparing for uh, what I keep telling you is what I think is coming, and so. These are the types of things, you know, you should be looking at. And like I said, you should be thinking about how, how do I protect my family? How do I prepare? Uh, it's no different, like, because I used to live in Florida, uh, when we were prepared for, I'm just getting another video queued up. But when we were prepared for a hurricane, you know, we boarded up the windows and we made sure we got out of the way. I mean, if you know the storm's coming, get out of the way. If you're Noah, you're building an ark right now. Uh, and so let's see. So we talked a little bit about the debt. We talked about what the Fed is currently doing. This was an interesting one I saw when he asked, he was asked, you know, what do you think, what do you think um, some of the ramifications of the COVID, uh, of COVID will be on the economy? And so let's play this one as well. Just looking at the, at the future, what we do know, Chair Powell, is that um, this crisis has accelerated certain trends, digitalization, uh, for example, um, and this will lead to certain uh, changes in, in economies. There are firms that will never recover from the crisis. There are potentially sectors uh, that may that may never recover from the crisis. We won't be traveling um, as much, for, for example. Um, what worries you most about the long-term impact? I would agree that um, what this crisis is in the process of doing is it is accelerating a lot of pre-existing uh, technological change. So technological change raises productivity generally and over long. So technological change raises productivity generally and over long periods of time, those gains tend to be broadly shared. But in the short term, that may or may not be the case. And I, I, along with many others, will leave social media out of it, by the way, in terms of adding to <clears throat> productivity. I wouldn't, I'm not sure I would say that for social media. But <clears throat> for other kinds of technology, I would say it. And um, in this particular uh, situation, I, I would worry that the changes, we're, we're not going back to the same economy. We're going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leverage to technology and i worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for for many workers who as andrew just mentioned you know the it's uh, relatively low paid public facing workers in the uh, service sector who are bearing the brunt this is largely minorities and women or, or skewed toward minorities and women and relatively low paid so okay i'm gonna go ahead and stop it there now here's the real crucial thing of what he just said that you should be paying attention to. So he just told you, you're not coming back to the same economy you left. In fact, it's gonna be completely different. That's very important that you hear the chairman of the Fed say that to you directly, that coming out of this pandemic, which we're not through yet, and he was just talking about that. He was just talking about you know the people who are hardest hit, generally minorities, uh, women who are out of work as well, uh, that those are the people groups that honestly, I think, I think we're still looking at, like I said, we're still going to continue to print money and that those people will continue to get stimulus checks, which again means that we're still printing money. So, uh, it's really very interesting to hear him say that it's important that you catch that. Uh, let's see, I might want to have one more video. Now, this is the video I talked about, um, in the last, 
in our last segment where it is uh, Janet Yellen, who is the Secretary of the Treasury, Jerome Powell, and they are being, uh, they're answering questions for the Financial Oversight Committee on the House. And so there's one congressman who begins to ask about cryptocurrency, about Bitcoin, about a digital currency. And then it goes into this really interesting area where he starts talking about a digital ID, that if you're gonna have a digital currency, then we all need to have a digital ID so that it's verified and it's secured. And he goes so far as to say it can be linked to different government checking accounts. Because again, one of the hardest people groups hit were the unbanked is what he's gonna say. And so you'll hear him, you'll hear this train of thought and it's important for you to catch that as boring as these videos might be, because believe me, I start listening to them and I start to zone out too. But as boring as they might be, he's telling you what's coming. He's telling you the train of thought that everybody's thinking about uh, when it comes to not just the US dollar, but even a digital ID that we'll all have, things that'll have our passport, that'll have your vaccine record, that'll have um, your checking account. Uh, so it'll be all linked just to one digital ID for you. So really interesting. I wanna add that in uh, now and let's hope that the computer wants to cooperate. Here we go. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, Secretary Yellen, Chair Paul, I'd like to probe a little bit deeper on central bank digital currencies and in particular the need for a secure digital ID for participants. I, I believe that both of you are on the record as acknowledging that an anonymous, untraceable digital dollar is not a viable option for our country or the free world because its ability to be abused for money laundering, terrorism financing, ransomware, and so on. Is that is that principally correct? I don't think I am on the record for that, but I'll go on the record now for it. Um, not, nor am I on the record, but I would I would agree that we need to be very careful about the use of a digital currency for um, illicit finance and um, an anonymous currency makes that makes that much harder to control. Yeah, uh, well, I concur. I think it's sort of logically impossible, you know, uh, and so. Um, so on the other hand, you know, I believe that the Chinese approach to digital currencies that give the government immediate and unconditional access to all transaction information will be equally unacceptable to Americans and to most citizens of the free world. Um, and therefore, a digital dollar will be crucially dependent on having an effective authentication component. That is a secure and legally traceable and maximally privacy preserving way for participants to authenticate themselves as a unique legally traceable individual, a secure digital ID. And it must be backed by a trusted court system and a clear legal regime to determine the conditions under which the participants might be unmasked. Uh, and, um, you know, as a digital dollar, if it's to be used internationally, we're then going to need a digital ID system that operates internationally, uh, at least among the free countries of the world. Um, I'd, I'd like to thank you both for beginning engagement with authorities in other countries on central bank digital currencies. And I was wondering where you see this discussion going as far as a secure digital ID and a means of authentication across boundaries, across countries. Maybe I should let Chair sure Powell, I should let Chair sure Powell start with this because he's been more involved than I have. Thank you. So, yeah, I mean, where we are is uh, we are engaged in a process of looking at, at all of the technical issues and design issues which interact with each other. And that's that's one of the most basic ones. Um, it, it, reflecting your earlier question, um, I, I don't think that a, a system that relies entirely on, uh, you know, uh, for example, private, completely private governance or completely secret uh, um, uh, information about who's who's actually owning the the, the the digital dollar would would not be viable, and you know the, the lack of privacy in the Chinese system is just not something we we could we could do here. At the same time, uh, so there's got to be a balance, and and it does call for uh, using the two tiered system in some way, so that there's an, a wallet outside of the uh, uh, outside of the central bank and. Um, transfers can take place there and that there are appropriate protections. We're, we're only beginning to think carefully about these things. 
and um, it's going to be a careful, detailed, uh, and probably lengthy process of consideration. One that we're, uh, you know, we're investing quite a bit in now, and that I expect will last some time. Yeah, yeah. Secretary Yellen, did you have any thoughts on this? Well, I, I, I would. The issue of a secure digital clear, ID I, is very much in your court having to do with you know, one of the things that coronavirus laid bare is the lack of, you know, simply a list of, of citizens of the U.S. and in our ability to rapidly distribute funds, particularly to the underbanked. You know, a high quality and universal uh, digital ID in the U.S. would have made that immeasurably easier, as well as everything from, you know, vaccine certificates or, or you name there it. There it is. Uh, and, and so this has been, uh, you know, it's an ongoing discussion on many fronts. And um, there are also sp specific proposals. I believe, um, I believe you've, had, um, you've had letters urging uh, both of you to, to look into this um, in, in more detail. And uh, so I was just wondering what the state, just as simply as a means for citizens to receive payments, uh, you know, Fed accounts, um, you know, each one of us has, you know, already an account with the federal government, uh, the IRS at least. And I was wondering what your, how you saw this part of the conversation going. Well, I think it's something that's worth exploring. I've not done so, but we would be glad to have further conversations with you about how something like this could work. There's certainly a problem as you've... Uh, who else is confident in Janet's ability to understand cryptocurrency, digital IDs, and how those two work together? I'm not as confident as I'd like to be in Janet's skill set, but we'll see what happens. So I hope you have found these very interesting and enlightening. And like I said, this isn't just something that like we're talking about or nerds are talking about. I mean, actual major, major countries and central banks are looking at the reality of what does it mean to have a central bank digital currency? Um, and then what that looks like for you and I, and how does that happen? How do we convert from physical dollars to digital dollars? Will we do that? When will that happen? Uh, I actually have a really cool video I saw the other day um, that Glenn Beck had done. And so I'm going to go find that one. And then we're going to watch that one together in the next series uh, because it's really got some interesting implications for if we wanted to do things like reparations. Well, maybe we'd be able to do that at that time when we're converting from uh, physical dollars to digital dollars. And so he discusses different ideas like that or for some people who are you know, for minorities. And uh, if you were going to do things like universal basic income, it could go right into somebody's checking account. And did you catch the representative when he said, well, don't we all have checking accounts with the Federal Reserve? Can't we just do that? Why do these people need to go create bank accounts? And so really interesting thought process and implications of what's coming uh, in the future for you and for me. But here's the thing, in the midst of it, I don't think the world's ending. I don't think you know, it's, this is it. And we're all taking the mark of the beast and uh, but I'm saying this is an infrastructure that's being laid. This is technology catching up with the book of revelation in many ways, in many ways. And to me is one of the reasons that lends a lot of credence to it over the fact that it is catching up with, with the Bible. And you're like, Oh, okay. I could see very easily how you could turn somebody's money on and turn somebody's money off. Um, and just all of the different things that are being set up here, with our financial market. And uh, it's almost too, it's too convenient. It's almost too planned. Uh, if you're really kind of looking at all of the information and the data you sit and you go, I think something is afoot. And so what can we do? How do we prepare? How do we protect ourselves and um, plan for our families and um, just whoever we can help? And so anyway, so this one has been all about uh, Jerome Powell, chairman of the Fed. So you can hear it from him directly. And like I said, in the next video, I want to show you some implications Glenn Beck is talking about. I also want to show you if you're interested in cryptocurrency and learning more about it and getting started, I, I want to do a kind of like a how-to video, of how you would do that. Um, and, you know, just like the stock market, whatever money you put in, just be willing to lose. And, you know, if you have that attitude, it's going to be okay. But don't put your life savings into this by any means, uh, because it is very volatile. Uh, but just like, you know, Susie Orman said, this is like back in the 2000s. This is dot com internet age. But right now it's happening in financial markets and our financial system. So if you clue into it and you do your research, 
you could come out ahead. All right, guys, thank you for